Άλλο ένα θέμα που μα έρχεται από το κεντρικό Λονδίνο. Η Ένωση Ελλήνων Τραπεζιτών Ηνωμένου Βασιλείου διοργάνωσε την 3η 22 Ιουνίου μια ενημερωτική διάσκεψη για το EU Settlement Scheme. Η εκδήλωση αυτή αφορά όλου του πολίτε τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση και τι οικογένειέ του που διαμένουν στο Ηνωμένο Βασίλειο. Η εκδήλωση αυτή διοργανώθηκε σε συνεργασία με την Αντιπροσωπεία τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση στο Ηνωμένο Βασίλειο και τέθηκε υπό την αιγίδα τη Ελληνική Πρεσβεία και τη ΗΠΑ τη Αρμοσία τη Κύπρου στο Ηνωμένο Βασίλειο. Την εκδήλωση χαιρέτησαν οι αναπληρώτρια επικεφαλή τη Αποστολή τη Πρεσβεία τη Ελλάδο, κ. Πινελόπη Μίχα, και ο Γενικό Πρόξενο τη ΗΠΑ τη Αρμοστία τη Κύπρου, κ. Θεόδωρο Γκότση. Στην ενημερωτική διάσκεψη, κυρίω ομιλητή ήταν ο κ. Κρίστοφερ Ντεζίρα, ο οποίο είναι δικηγόρο και ειδικό σύμβουλο τη Αντιπροσωπεία τη Ευρωπαϊκή Ένωση στο Ηνωμένο Βασίλειο για θέματα μεταναστευτικά. Συντονιστή ήταν ο κ. Γκρέκ Χατζικρυγκοριάδη. Την εκδήλωση έκλεισε ο Chairman of the Hellenic Bankers Association UK, κ. Λούι Λοίζου. Στο βίντεο που ακολουθεί, θα σα παρουσιάσουμε ένα απόσπασμα από αυτή την πολύ ενημερωτική εκδήλωση. My name is uh, Greg Hatzgreoriadis, Head of Communications Committee of the Hellenic Bankers Association UK, and I will be coordinating today's discussion. This is an information session on the EU Settlement Scheme addressed to all EU citizens and their families in the UK. On behalf of HBA UK, we would like to thank the delegation of the EU to the UK for assisting us in the organization of this online event, as well as the Embassy of Greece and the Cyprus High Commission for bringing this formal gathering under their auspices. Let's welcome and introduce our speakers for this evening. First of all, the Council General of the High Commission of Cyprus, Mr. Theodoros Kotsis. Secondly, the Deputy Head of Mission of the Embassy of Greece, Mrs. Pinelopi Micha. And last but not least, the Director and Founding Solicitor of Serafus and a special advisor to the delegation of the EU to the UK, Mr. Christopher De Sira, who has over 15 years of experience in the areas of law and immigration. After some initial remarks uh, by the embassy's uh, representatives, we will proceed with a presentation prepared by Christopher De Sira, which will be followed by a Q&A session and closing remark by the chairman of the Hellenic Bankers Association UK, Mr. Luis Loizu. For any questions before we start, please send them in the Zoom chat uh, and, and the speakers will try to address them after their initial remarks. Mr. Theodoros Gotsis, the floor is yours for your initial remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Greg, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, thank you for the kind initiative to organize this important webinar in a very timely Uh, time juncture. Uh, I know from his work, uh, Mr. Desira is always uh, available to answer the many questions that arise for our citizens. Uh, of course, the EU settlement scheme and the whole Brexit business was a huge challenge uh, for us in the Cyprus High Commission as well as in all other EU member states uh, embassies in the UK, of course, for our Greek colleagues as well. Uh, now we are coming to the end of this, of, of the current um, uh, stage of this process with the deadline on the 30th of June for the submission of the application for the pre-settled or settled status from our citizens. Uh, we have come a long way after the Brexit referendum back in 2016. Five years later, Brexit has happened uh, in the beginning of this year. And we are coming to the point uh, to see uh, how our citizens are affected uh, from its con consequences. But the most important thing currently is for the remaining citizens, all EU citizens, that uh, didn't apply as yet for the EU settlement scheme to apply in the remaining eight days. This is very important for all of us. And uh, after that, of course, I'm sure that uh, Christopher will explain uh, what follows, what are the options. But in any case, currently we focus on taking advantage of the remaining time 
for uh, all our citizens that haven't applied. So without uh, further ado, we will hear the presentations and maybe we can discuss or have a Q&A Q later. And uh, that's uh, from me for now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elder Scott. Uh, let's now move to Mrs. Pinelopi Micha, who has actually provided us with her recorded message. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure to participate in this information session of the EU settlement scheme and the rights of EU citizens in the UK. I would like to congratulate the Hellenic Bankers Association for their initiative and to reaffirm our embassy's strong and constant support to events that contribute to the Hellenic community in the UK. This event is organized in cooperation with the EU delegation in the UK and under the auspices of the Embassy of Greece and the High Commission of Cyprus. According to latest statistics, around 123,000 Greek citizens have applied for settled or pre-settled status, while it is estimated that more than 150,000 Greeks live in the UK. I would, I would like also to remind everyone that EU citizens living in the UK have to apply to the EU Settlement Scheme by the 13th of June. If you have not applied yet, please apply now for settled or pre-settled status in order to secure your right to live and work in the UK. Additionally, if you know any Greek citizen or other EU citizens who have not applied yet, please advise them to apply as soon as possible and help them if they need support. And I would like to reassure all Greeks in the UK that the Embassy of Greece in itself will always be amenable to assist you in any possible way. Thank you. Now I think the floor is uh, for Mr. Uh, Christopher De Sira uh, to provide us with his, uh, with his useful presentation. Mr. De Sira, you have the floor. Thank you very much uh, and thanks for the lovely introduction and inviting me today. Hopefully everyone can see the slides and do give me a shout if they're not uh, uh, viewed properly. Um, so let's get to the first question. Um, the first question we receive uh, from a lot of people uh, is, uh, is this. My status, does that mean my children are automatically protected? Now we get this a lot from parents who have received their settled status and for any pre-existing children, so there's children who are born uh, to parents before they receive settled status and also before the 30th of June are not automatically protected if the parent applies. Children also need to make their own individual applications to the EU settlement scheme in order to be protected every individual person needs to make an individual application. If either one of the parents has settled status, then the child will get settled status. They'll receive the best status that either one of the parents holds. It doesn't matter how long the child has been living in the UK, they will receive the best status if one of the parents has settled status. The law is, oh. going, to, the law is going to change slightly uh, because this government has draft legislation in place that will allow children born in the UK from the 1st of July to receive settled status if their parents subsequently receive settled status. So if the birth comes before settled status, uh, so the children will be automatically British at the point that the parent becomes settled in the UK. This is currently draft law um, but when it comes into place uh, from the 1st of July, if a child is born then the parent and the parent subsequently receives settled status, the child becomes British at the point that that parent receives settled status. This is a, a unique change in, in British nationality law and, it, and it's been put in place to help children uh, achieve protections much easier. The next question we receive a lot is, is this. I have pre-settled status. Will I receive settled status automatically after living here for five years? Now, the EU settlement scheme doesn't work in this automatic process. If someone has pre-settled status, in order to acquire settled status later, they will need to make a new application to the EU settlement scheme once they've lived in the UK continuously for five years and before their pre-settled status expires. 
This means making a second application to the scheme in a similar way as before, but proving five years residence in the UK. I say it doesn't currently uh, uh, automatically change the settled status. It's because this process of a two-stage application process, pre-settled to settled status, is slightly contentious. And there's uh, discussions going on politically about whether a second application should be made in order to acquire settled status. However, until those discussions result in any change in procedure, anyone who currently has pre-settled status will need to make a second application to the scheme to acquire settled status later. It won't happen automatically. The next question is, is this, um, my passport has expired. Does that mean I can't apply until I receive a new one? No, it doesn't. Um, you can apply using expired ID documents. It's particularly important now to do so because we don't have much time between now and the 30th of June deadline to get new ID documents. There's just simply not enough time to do that. So if you have an expired document, don't wait until you receive a new passport or a new national ID card before you apply to the EU settlement scheme. You can apply relying on an expired document. You will need to download an application form from the Home Office website using the link that's found here or Google apply to the EU settlement scheme by post or by email. The reason why you need to download this application form is because the online form that's available for everyone else with valid passports and, uh, and national ID cards uh, is incompatible with expired ID documents. It simply won't work. So you will need to download this application form from the Home Office website, complete it and email it to the Home Office before the 30th of June 2021 deadline. If you have evidence, you can attach this evidence to the email that you send to the Home Office, so long as, there's, uh, so long as uh, the file sizes are small enough to do so. If you've got too much evidence to email, the Home Office will, receive, will expect to receive your application form by email, and then you can post your evidence to the Home Office at the address found on this application form. The most important thing to do is in this scenario, if you have an expired ID document, is to download this form, complete it, and email it to the Home Office on the email address found on the form before the 30th of June 2021 deadline. The next question is about the deadline. So if I miss the deadline, will I ever be able to get pre-settled or settled status? Now, anyone who misses the deadline can apply for pre-settled or settled status. It's just that they've missed the deadline. What they'll need to do is they'll need to make a late application to the EU settlement scheme if they missed the 30th of June 2021 deadline. A late application means that they're going to have to ex explain why they've missed the 30th of June deadline, and they will have to have good reasons for doing so. And in some cases, you will need to have evidence of those good reasons. So, for example, if, you've, if someone's hospitalised now, and they're unable to make an application while they're hospitalised and they miss the deadline, they can apply late to the EU settlement scheme. Their explanation will be the hospitalisation and the illness, and their evidence will be medical records. And then at which point the Home Office should accept that as good reasons for missing the deadline, and then they'll go on to process the pre-settled or settled status application. If you're someone who didn't know you needed to apply, and you've encountered the Home Office in some way through your life, the Home Office won't uh, enforce any immigration uh, 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 proceedings against you. They will give you instead a letter uh, which provides you 28 days to apply to the scheme. If you receive this letter from the Home Office, you must make sure you apply to the EU settlement scheme within that 28 day window, because if you miss that 28 day window, it's almost likely that you won't have any good reasons for missing the deadline. And if you don't have good reasons for missing the deadline, then your application will not be processed by the, by the Home Office and they will just simply send it back to you and say you're not eligible to apply because your good reasons weren't good enough. What happens with elderly people? So people that do not have employment and uh, for one reason or the other, might not have been able to uh, submit an application on time. Thank you. 
Um, so with elderly people, the Home Office accepts that elderly people will generally have good reasons for applying late because they have they'll some they'll have a number of um, hurdles to overcome in some cases. For example, the te technological barrier. Um, maybe they have health issues. Maybe they're residing in care facilities, or maybe they have no friends or family around to be able to help them make an application. So generally, the Home Office has said they're going to be very lenient on, on elderly people and they won't necessarily ask for evidence of their good reason. But so long as the person explains why they've missed the deadline, then the Home Office has said they're going to be flexible and accept the application on face value. So first, first question um, would be, would it be possible to extend pre-settled status after the deadline in order to get uh, five years of, of residency? So there is going to be very limited circumstances in order to be able to extend pre-settled status. And the, it's mainly linked to the coronavirus and absences. So, for example, if someone has pre-settled status and they're locked outside of the UK and they've been outside of the UK for a year and a half, um, the Home Office have said that um, for any absence over 12 months, that period beyond 12 months will not be counted within the five year period. So in which case someone will, with some, someone's pre-settled status will expire before they even have five years to rely on. So in these circumstances, the Home Office will allow a second application for pre-settled status to extend their pre-settled status to get them to that five year window. If they have received uh, the British citizenship, but you have held the citizenship ceremony, so they're officially British, but they don't have a British passport yet, because I think that takes around a month or two, if I remember from my experience. Can they use that certificate uh, at the airport uh, as a proof uh, that they are a UK, indeed a UK citizen, or should there be any issues and they need to wait for, for the official passport to, to be delivered? So they can rely on the certificate of, of naturalisation, and it's because the certificate of naturalisation is proof of British citizenship. Even though the passport is used to prove citizenship, the passport is in essence just a travel document. And the real evidence that someone is British is that certificate. So they can rely on that certificate if they have problems at the border. However, they shouldn't because even if they've become British, the records of settled status will not be deleted. So they should still be able to gain entry in the UK relying on their digital settled status, even though they've subsequently become British. But if they want to, they can use the certificate of naturalisation at the border to prove that they have a lawful right to enter the UK. One, one of our attendees uh, mentions that they got the settled status uh, uh, in October 2019. Uh, they have been living in the UK since September 2013, but they were studying master's and, and PhD most of the time and only worked for about uh, two years throughout this period. And they have never had a comprehensive sickness insurance. Does that mean uh, they cannot apply for permanent residency uh, card, uh, which could lead to a citizenship? Um, do they still need to wait for the five uh, years period? Does any of that previous period that they were here count? And uh, can they apply for that in the, in the future? Okay, so we're, we're mixing up a few topics within this question. So um, permanent residence cards, you can no longer apply for permanent residence cards. Um, that process is ending. Um, but uh, it, you've got settled status, so you don't need a permanent residence card. Settled status is the, the route into citizenship. So as long as you've had settled status for 12 months, uh, or you're married or in a civil partnership with someone who's British, at which point you don't have to wait 12 months. As long as you've had settled status for 12 months, then you're eligible. You meet one of the eligibility requirements for citizenship. When it comes to citizenship, the, another requirement is being a person of good character over the 10 years or however long you've been in the UK, if it's shorter than 10 years, that predates your citizenship application. Good character includes a number of things as well as criminality. It's about lawful immigration status in the UK. So if you're an EU citizen and you weren't technically exercising your treaty rights in the UK, because you didn't have comprehensive sickness health insurance coverage before you got settled status, then you will technically uh, not meet the good character requirement. However, the Home Office have said that 
that for citizenship applications, they will wait, they will ignore this, the health insurance requirements so long as a person, when they're applying for citizenship, they meet all of the other requirements. And the reason is, is that many people don't, didn't realise they need comprehensive sickness health insurance coverage to live lawfully in the UK if they're a student or a self-sufficient person. So the majority of people don't have health insurance. So this is why for citizenship, they'll be more lenient, but you need to make sure you meet all of the requirements of citizenship and also explain why you didn't have health insurance. Uh, the explanation will normally be, I didn't know I needed to have it. Um, if you're not sure, citizenship is a fairly complex process. If you're not sure, speak to a lawyer before you apply um, to make sure you're eligible for it. One key point is, is if you do apply and you're refused, um, the, the, the punishment is financial. You'll lose all of the money you've paid to the Home Office, but your settled status is still secure. Being refused citizenship doesn't affect your settled status. You will still have settled status. And last but not least, I would like to, to give the floor to, Louis, to Mr. Luis Luizu, the chairman of the Hellenic Bankers Association UK, uh, for the closing uh, remarks. Uh, thank you, everyone, on, on my side. Mr. Luizu, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, um, Greg, uh, Christopher. Thank you very much for attending this um, this event and for answering all uh, these uh, questions. Uh, I'm sure um, if we have some additional questions, perhaps uh, we can reach out to you and um, you can share some insights. Uh, I would also like to thank the Consul General, the other of Cotis, for um, his uh, presence today, and um, also uh, Mrs. Spinelobi Miha um, for um, also her presence. Uh, from our side, as um, a Hellenic uh, Bankers Association, I would like to note that we are near, we're close to um, the um, uh, Hellenic uh, community, both the Greek and the Cypriot uh, communities. Um, we treat them alike. And we'd like to uh, assure that uh, anything we can help uh, to assist uh, the community will be available and at hand in, in doing so. Uh, lastly, I would also like to thank, of course, um, Greg uh, for his uh, um, coordination this evening, and also uh, Michael Dimobulos uh, for. Uh, helping with the, uh, the event uh, as the head of the events committee at the uh, Hellenic Bank Association, and also Christina Nusia uh, uh, from the external committee of uh, the HPA for all the uh, communication with the uh, embassies uh, of the UK and the Cyprus High Commission. Thank you all, and um, I wish you a um, pleasant e evening, and thank you for being with us uh, tonight. Στο σημείο αυτό θα θέλαμε να ευχαριστήσουμε τον κύριο Λούι Λοΐζου και την Ένωση Ελλήνων Τραπεζιτών Ηνωμένου Βασιλείου για την ευγενική παραχώρηση του οπτικοακουστικού υλικού αυτής της εκδήλωσης.